Hello, this is Jay with Gacha Security. In this video, I'm going to go over the playback portion of Smart PSS. If you want to review any recorded footage from any of your cameras, this will be done in playback. If you currently have cameras open in live view, we suggest you close those videos. Playback uses a lot of PC resources such as memory and bandwidth. Closing live view will provide a smoother and faster playback experience. To open playback, Go to the icon, left click, and the playback screen will open. I'll briefly go over the commonly used areas, and I'll come back to each area in depth later. In the middle of the screen is a viewing window. By default, it's two by two or four cameras. That's two across and two down. In the upper left portion of the window, we have our list of recorders and below that are the options for retrieving video. On the bottom of the screen we have our timeline for video, scissors for exporting video, playback controls, and display options. On the right side there's a small arrow that will open a list of video files once we have a search initiated. In live view our recorders were under organizations and playback they are under device. To start searching for footage from a camera, open the tree under a recorder and select the cameras that you want to retrieve footage for. Here I'm going to select the call box and the gate overview. You're going to leave record type at all records, mainstream at mainstream, and then you're going to come to the time box and you're going to click on the time box and you're going to see a calendar. Anything that is in green means that you have footage on that day for those cameras selected. Newer versions of the software will have a blue icon um, next to the date. I'm going to select the 25th. It's important that you select the same day for the start and the end time you cannot search from one day to the next. If you have an incident that happened at 11 o'clock at night to 1 o'clock in the morning, you would have to search from 11 to 12 from, for the first day and then from 12 to 1 for the second day in two separate searches. Usually I leave the time alone and I'll explain that to you later why you can leave this in a 24 hour period. If you know the exact time that an incident happened, you can change the time here. So we're gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna click Search, and now it's gonna search for my video files. It is important to realize at this point that Smart PSS has only found the video files. It has not actually downloaded them to your computer. While watching video, you will still be pulling video data from the recorder. There are several variables that can affect the speed and performance at this point. If you are accessing a local recorder on a hardwired network, you will have the best results. If you're on a poor Wi-Fi network connecting to a local device, or if you're connected to a remote device on the internet, you will experience slow performance. Keep in mind most internet connections have a much lower upload speed compared to download speed. The upload speed at the recorder is what usually has the most effect on remote connections and performance. Now that my search is done, I can see that the two tiles have a video icon in them. The first tile is already selected, which is indicated by the white box around it. At the bottom on the timeline, I have multiple yellow blocks. These yellow blocks indicate the system recorded based on motion detection and each block is an event or file. Most systems we install record on motion only and this maximizes hard drive space and makes finding certain events easier. If I select the second tile, I can see that the timeline on the bottom has changed. I'll go back to the first camera and you can see that these yellow blocks are changing. This means that these are different video events and it created different files. Each yellow block is a video uh, file. If I come down to the timeline, 
and I select the timeline by clicking on it once, I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse and I can scroll in on the timeline. This allows me to pull video from a very specific time. If you have an incident that was reported at a specific time, you can use this to really drill down to that specific time. You can also click the timeline and drag it left and right to get to the time that you want. If you scroll in too far, uh, you want to get to a different time or move around, you can move that timeline around. Under the timeline, I have my playback controls. I have a sync button, I have a directional button, uh, play, pause, stop, frame by frame, speed control, and a sound button if your camera has a microphone. For this next section of the video, I've changed the time frame on the timeline. Previously we were at around 6 a.m. and now we are going to be at um, around 12 in the afternoon or midday. To start playing the video, I simply click the yellow box and the video will start to play automatically. Once the video is playing, I can pause the video and then I can go frame by frame forward. If I wanted to go frame by frame backwards, I would need to select play and then change the direction of the playback and then I can pause the video and then I can go frame by frame backwards. I cannot adjust the frame by frame direction without selecting play and then changing the direction of playback. Once the video is playing, I can change the speed of the video by coming over here to the speed icon and adjusting the slider to slide the video to slow down the video or I can also speed the video up. If you're experiencing slow performance we suggest that you do not speed the video up because that's only going to cause more performance issues. You can't pull data any faster um, than you already are. So I'm going to play the video. I'm going to change the time frame back to normal playback. Now to start playing video in the second tile, I'm going to go ahead and select the second tile and then I am going to click somewhere on a yellow bar and you'll see that video is playing back on the uh, second camera. At this point, the cameras are out of sync. If I go and enlarge this camera, you'll see that the time is at 1221. If I go to this camera, the time is 1409, which is 209. So in order to sync the cameras up, I'm going to want to select the first camera, and then I'm going to come down here to the sync button, and this is going to sync the cameras to the same time frame. So now both videos are playing at the same time frame. We just have no activity here. So I'm going to so go back on the timeline here and we'll jump to this time frame when this red vehicle is coming in and you'll see that this camera is saying it's having no record because at that point there was no video being recorded. Now as the cameras sync up you're going to see that this red vehicle comes into view and then as these black vehicles, the black car and the gray car are leaving you see them on both cameras and the cameras are synced up on time and we're gonna watch this white car and the white car is gonna come in and you'll see as it approaches the speed bump it goes through the gates if you have multiple cameras in your camera view you can have two three four even up to eight if your computer can handle the processing of that everything will sync to the first camera so even if I click a different portion of the timeline the cameras will sync to that okay and again it takes a little bit of time to get the cameras completely in sync because we are on a rem remote connection to this location 
So now I'm going to cancel the sync and I'm going to come to the second camera and I'm going to go ahead and close that camera so that we can work with just one camera view. Uh, now that I've found the video I want, I'm going to export it so that I can save it to my PC and then I can send it to a flash drive and um, share it however I need to. So when we choose video, we suggest that you start a few seconds ahead of the incident or before the uh, subject comes into view. So I still have my second camera selected. I'm going to select the first camera and then I'm going to come down here to the bottom left corner and I'm going to click the scissors. And what the, that does is that brings me two sliders and the starting slider is placed at 1213 and the ending slider is at 1213. The sliders always come in at a one hour time frame and as you see I cannot see the second slider because it's off the screen. So what I need to do is I need to select my timeline and then using my mouse and the scroll wheel I'm going to scroll in and then I can see my second slider. So I'm going to come over here and grab my slider to the time frame that we're working on and now I can zoom in and I can grab the timeline and move the timeline as I need to and you'll see that video is still playing back while we're adjusting our sliders so another thing I can do is I can pause the video I can adjust my slider and let's say we want to take a video of this HD supply truck as it's coming through the gate so I'm gonna go ahead and continue playback and I'm gonna watch my indicator and that shows me where we're at on the actual timeline and playback I'm going to let that truck leave the view. I'm going to click pause and then I'm going to come and grab my slider to that indicator. And now my video will export from the first slider to the second slider. So in order to start the export, I'm going to come and click the scissors again. And now I'm going to have an export window pop up. It's going to allow me to select where I want to save the video to. When we install the software, we typically install a folder on your desktop called videos. So I would choose the videos folder and select. And that allows us to choose where the video is going to be saved to. At this point, you cannot change the name of the file. You would have to come back and change the file name later in Windows. Then as far as the export format, you can choose from three different formats. Uh, we suggest ASF because that plays um, the best in Windows uh, with the codecs and sometimes AVI and MP4 need to be converted before they act can actually be played in a Windows media player. Uh, we also have some other players that will work with that. So now that we've set that up, there's no reason to export the smart player. The only time you export the smart player is if you're dealing with the original file format. Uh, the original file format would only be used in extreme circumstances where you wanted an auto trail that the video was not uh, tampered with uh, such as a homicide or um, home invasion where the integrity of the video would come into play. So now I'm going to click OK and it's going to tell me that the call box camera is playing back by time. System needs to stop playing back. That's fine. That's always going to happen. Just click OK and now we'll have a window showing us the progress of the export. Obviously, the larger the export, the longer this is going to take. Now we get a pop-up saying that the export is finished. I can go here to the exported tab. I can see a log of what was exported. 
I can click on the folder icon and this is going to open up a Windows Explorer screen, which opened up on my other screen. I'm going to drag it in here and you'll see we now have the video. I can right click on it. I can rename it as I need to. And then I can also double click the video. And that opens it up inside of Windows Media Player. And again, that opened up on another screen for me. So I'm just going to drag it over and you'll see that we now have playback of that camera. Windows Media Player has basic functions for playing back video such as pause, rewind, fast forward, stop, but it's not recommended for detailed uh, viewing of surveillance footage. Uh, we have a player available that will allow you to pause frame by frame, um, select an area of the screen and zoom in on that area of the screen. For, for more information on that, uh, just contact us. So another method of finding footage is to go back to Smart PSS. We're going to close all these windows. And on the right hand side, we have a list of files. So here we have the call box at 2019, January 25th, and that's 12 o'clock midnight the time frame on that, the, the length of that video was 22 seconds and these are all in chronological order. So if you know a very specific time frame that you're looking for such as somebody says that an incident happened and they know the time, you can look on this list and you can actually find the um, very specific video file because remember every yellow block is an actual file so these yellow blocks uh, correspond with what's in this list so if we wanted to come back to the time frame that we're working on somewhere around 1210 we can scroll down this list and we'll find the time frame that we're working on and And I can double click the file and that file will open up and start playing back. Where this feature really comes in handy is if you're asked to pull video footage for multiple cameras for a very specific time frame. Uh, we've been asked to do that several times by law enforcement that they want all cameras in a community for a certain time frame from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So I could select various files as needed and then I could come to the save icon and I could save them and that would bring up my export window and then again I would choose my path, the format, and I would click OK and then I would be able to export them. If you're exporting large amounts of video, we suggest that you do it on site via a wired connection. Also keep in mind that most video files are too large to email, so you'll need some type of file sharing service such as Google Drive or Dropbox. If you have any questions or need additional assistance, please contact our office at 678-430-3116. Visit our website at gotchasecurity.net or email us at support at gotchasecurity.net.